welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another episode of XC Shop Critique. Today I'm doing a critique for the store Awesome Creations and the owner's name is Hernan. So thank you Hernan for letting me do a review of your shop. I really appreciate it and letting me do a critique on it. So let's go ahead and get started. So my first impression before I jump into anything was your name. I like the name. I know that the fact that finding a good name on Etsy is kind of hard when there's millions of stores and you do run the the fact the risk of like you like something but then when you type it in it's already taken. So it's really hard to find something that will stick that you want it. However, um, my number one um, thing that I tell people is when you do get a store name, make sure that it's spelled, um, not saying that yours is not spelled correctly. I understand probably why you have it that way because Awesome Creations probably was already taken. However, for the average person, let's say they do like your store, they didn't bookmark it, they didn't favor your store, and then later on they want to look for it, they're going to type awesome, like A-W-E-S-O-M-E. And they're going to forget that you actually had it abbreviated as A-W-S-O-M. So that's going to be a, a task of people finding your store later on if they want to go back in case they didn't bookmark your store, they didn't favor your store, they didn't you know, um, buy anything from your store so they don't have nothing in reference to find you again. Um, I know that once you have the name, you could go back and change it if you wanted to. Not saying you have to. If it was my store, I would only because um, I want the name to be easy to remember and I want it to also to be spelled correctly to avoid in the future um, those type of mistakes when they try to find you. And also if you go and you promote your store in other places like Facebook or um, Instagram and when you write the name, people are going to think it's misspelled because they're not on, they're not going to understand that the reason why it's spelled that way is because Awesome Creations, the right way, wasn't available. So it, it kind of gets tricky with that as well. So it's just something to think about, but you do get a chance to change it. It does take a while for it to the, for the change to take effect. It won't change the same day. You, you will still see your old name. Um, but it's something to think about. Um, not necessarily that you have to, but just my, that's just my take on that. So I did a, an audit on, on this listing right here, this one right here. And the first thing, you know, I always tell people is the most important factor before I look at the price, before I look at your reviews, before I read the listing description or anything else is the picture. The picture has to be compelling and is critical to your success. A bad photo could prevent you from making a sale, no matter how amazing your product is. So I'm not saying your product is not amazing. I'm just saying the photo needs improvement. I would change it um, because you want the photo to be enticing. That when the, somebody comes across your picture, they want that item. Even if they weren't shopping for it and they happen to see it, they're going to want to click on it, find out more information of it on it, and hopefully buy from you. So you want to make sure that, one, your, your photo shows off the product. Two, that you're using all 10 available photos in each listing. That you uh, Also, that you accurately just, um, show like a scale of, of the item, how big it is. And you want to crop it in a complementary way. Um, you want to make sure that the background is set is like settled. It's not like distracting from the picture. Use natural light if you can, um, and, and show against a, a simple, clear background. Um, if I was to look at this, let's say I was looking for something on the XC search results, and I saw this. I think it's glitter, but then at the same time, I wouldn't really know what it is, and I would just keep going. I wouldn't even stop at it. Um, and I love glitter. So it's not, it's just that the picture is not captivating enough. You have to think about it like this. When you shop online, right? It's not like when you go to an actual store, when you go to an actual store, 
you could pick up the product, you could hold the product, you could turn the product around, you could touch the product, you could see it physically in real life. However, when you are shopping online, the only thing you have is the photo. That's the only thing I'm going to be able to see that is going to make me either buy it or not buy it. That's the only thing that is going to make that person is your photo. All you have is your photo. I can't touch it. I can't hold it. I can't feel the texture on it. So those the pictures have to be amazing. You have to think, you have to treat your online store like a real boutique or like a real shop. You have to invest the time in taking really good photos. You have to invest the time in buying maybe a, a light box. So a light box um, it, it's a box. You could go to Amazon and find them for cheap. They're not too expensive. And with a light box, it would eliminate distractions on the back. And usually it either has a white background or you could change the backgrounds to like black and different colors. I would say stick with the black, with the white, I'm sorry. And this is how it looks basically. So this is how it looks. So you put the item in there, you take the picture with a clear white background. Um, that doesn't have distraction, doesn't have shadows, doesn't have different colors. And you could really, really make a, 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 a picture that's going to grab someone's attention. And then you could take pictures doing different angles of it. Um, I would, I would personally try to take the picture of the glitter. Um, not only just of the glitter, but using the glitter in different projects, maybe that you, that you could use the glitter. But you definitely have to work on your pictures. I will also say adding additional pictures, adding a call to action, like adding a picture that says click below to read list in description or click below to learn more about the glitter or, or click here to like to favorite this listing. That way they could save it in their favorites and hopefully later they could run into it again and maybe get a sale. Maybe if you don't get it now, you could get it down the line but to be honest change your pictures they have to be it has to be compelling you know i want to see a picture that when i look at it i know exactly what i'm buying it's clear it's nice and it's going to make me want to click on it when i look at this picture it really doesn't i'm confused i don't know if it's no polish i don't it looks like glitter because it's a little shiny but it could just be pretty much anything so definitely will work on Photography is the most one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, because that's what's going to captivate someone's eye to click on the actual listing. So that's my suggestions on the picture. You only have one. So I would say add additional um, pictures as well and add additional pictures with the product being used. Um, so let's move on to SEO, right? So SEO is search engine optimization is how people find your store. Um, you want to make sure that you use descriptive words. Um, so if I'm looking for a table, I wouldn't just write table. I would put small blue table lamp because I'm being descriptive of what I'm looking for. So you have to do the same thing. You wrote sunflower. Sunflower could be anything. It could be a sunflower, right? Like a flower. It could be a sunflower dress. It could be a sunflower earrings. It could be a ring. It's so broad that keyword that you, it's going to be really really hard for you to find your target audience and it's also going to be hard for you to to find people that are well target audience that people are interested in your product and also it's going to be so broad that you're going to have a lot of competition if you put something um so broad like sunflower versus if you put um glitter of the color sunflower let's say i don't think that makes sense but just to kind of give you an idea if you wanted to put the word in there kind of be more descriptive um you got to think about how people type stuff what would someone search for when they put the word glitter what what would they put maybe card glitter for cards glitter for frames you got to be more specific um what i highly recommend is using is signing up for it xerank.com is free you don't pay anything for it they do have a pro version but the free one is enough to use and you go in there and you could do audits you could look at your competition you could find keywords 
there's so much you could do in there. You could plug in your store and it will tell you things that you're doing wrong, things that need improvement. So it's a really, really nice feature, but you definitely have to work on your SEO. Um, you have to do the grunt work of it. You have to put the time and energy to learn about SEO, um, whether it's through videos. I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel, whether it's you buying an SEO book, whether it's you taking a class somewhere. Um, but that's what's going to drive the traffic as well, because you got to think about it like this. The SEO is when somebody types in the keyword and they find your product. And the picture is what entices them to click on the product. So they both, they, all of these things that we're going to talk about today, they go hand in hand. You can't have a successful store with either one. They all have to combine together and that's going to make a thriving business for you. And it's going to increase your sales and it's going to drive more people to your shop. And you do have beautiful products. The problem is that your SEO is not done correctly. Your pictures are not done correctly. And then on top of that, there's other additional things I'm going to be talking about today about your store. What you want to do is you want to go to XE rank. If you look at the keywords you currently have, these two right here are too competitive. That means that um, too many people are using the word glitter. If you go to XC.com and you were to type in glitter on their, on their search box, it's going to kind of give you an idea of how many other people are using the same word. And if you look at if you look at it, you're gonna see that right now 678,000 people are using the same keyword. So therefore, if you are trying to rank organically, which means that you're not running ads and you just want somebody to type in the keyword and find your product, it's gonna be very hard because you're using a keyword that's oversaturated. If you try to run an ad on Etsy your cost per click is going to be very high because now you're bidding with a lot of people. So your cost per ad, you know, every time somebody clicks on that ad and goes to your store, it's going to be really, really high. So it's not worth using keywords that one, you can't rank organically and two, um, you're going to pay so much, so much, unless you're using a specific keyword for a product that's very, very hard to, find additional keywords but for your product you should be able to be able to substitute those keywords with different keywords that will work for your store and that you could drive organic traffic to your Etsy shop um, definitely have to work on the SEO portion as you can see this is too competitive um, this one here is your VIP is low competition that's why it says VIP is the one that drives somewhat of a traffic when it says VIP it's not necessarily that it's gonna send you tons of traffic it just means that you it you're gonna get more results from that keyword than the other two and it's a low competition keyword you see how that one only has there's only 715 other stores using that keyword so it's not that much of a competition that one is actually really good for your shop to compete with um, so you have to find keywords like that. Um, another thing I noticed is that you didn't use all 13 tags. And it's important that you use all 13. The more keywords you put, the more chances of you getting found through different keywords. If you don't optimize it correctly and use all 13, you are shortchanging yourself as a business owner because now you're going to get less traffic. You want to make sure that you do the grunt work of spending the necessary time to find keywords. You could come up here and you could put um, the keywords that you think that people will be searching your items for. You could also see what other competitors are using as keywords and kind of do a research on those keywords to see if they work or, or they don't work. And you want to like play with it and you got to, it's, it's a little tedious, but you have to keep doing it. And, and you know, I, I will either have a notepad or in your computer on the on the, the note section, start typing in the keywords that you find. And you have to do the groundwork, like that's the one that you currently have. And, you know, just looking at, like this one, find glitter, that would be a good one there. Lose glitter, that one would be a good one as well. So you gotta do the groundwork and kind of like look through them. Um, bulk glitter, so if you do sell in bulks, that would be a good one. Um, you know, just typing different things like that one was kind of like gold 
so you could put gold glitter and kind of see what comes up you know you got to keep playing with it don't just settle for the first ones that you find spend some time on it this is a business you have to think about it just because it's an online business doesn't mean that you don't get to treat it like a real business you do at the end of the day you are paying taxes on your store you are running a business and you want to run it enough that either you could quit your day job and do this full time and have financial freedom but if you want that you have to do the work unfortunately just by putting three keywords and and hoping that it's going to get you sales it won't work and this is what you have to do like keep putting those keywords keep searching for them until you find some that that work for your shop and you know have to become creative and um, any materials that you use for for the glitter maybe looking it up that way to see if you find it that way but just keep you know looking for them this is glitter office decor I don't know if that kind of goes with your theme but you could kind of go like that and just keep searching once you find let's say you find 13 keywords and you're good to go you want to put all the keywords in your title you want to separate them with commas and you want to put the ones that are low in competition in the front and the ones that are like medium in the back side. You're not going to be able to fit all 13 on the title because there's a limitation in character. But put as many as you can. Then you also want to use all 13 tags down here as well. And then you want to use them in your listing description. You, your first 160 character is called the meta description. And this is what is shown on Google when somebody types in glitter and your actual listing pops up in Google or any search engine. So you wanna make sure that it's enticing and that when somebody is reading it, they wanna click on it. They're like, wow, I wanna get, I wanna see how it looks. But your, your 160 characters, this is what you have. Please make sure your address is correct before checking out. I would not, I would be, I would not be held responsible for packages being shipped to the wrong address. To be honest, that would turn me off. If I was about to click on your ad, and all I see is I'm not responsible if you buy from me and you didn't give me the, if you didn't give me the right address, I wouldn't even buy from you because to me I feel like oh he's you know it's a little um you you, you want to make sure that what you write it's okay to say what you mean but say it in a very professional way that the person feels like oh okay. I'm responsible, right? Kind of trick them. They're responsible, obviously, but you don't want to say like that because it would turn off people away from your shop. That's the first thing they see. They, they haven't even clicked on the actual product and you're already saying, if, if you don't put the right address, I'm not, I'm not responsible. You don't want that. As a business owner, you are going to take loss and you're going to have people that are not going to read I, I write listing descriptions. I explain everything from how to print, from how to get it. I send them screenshots of verification, everything, and they still don't read. But your job as a seller is to put that in the in the back and still kill them with kindness and still um, provide outstanding customer service. If you if, if somebody goes to your shop and they feel like you're not going to provide them, outstanding customer service for the most part they will not buy from you because i'm that type of person so i would change that i would not keep this here because it does turn off a lot of people including myself if i was buying i wouldn't want to see that as the first thing now it is good to be clear and it is good to have shipping policies and be really specific with people but there's a way to do it there's a tactical way to do it and there's a, a place for it as well so what I would do is, on your listing description on the top, write an enticing um, way, message about your listing. Get this beautiful um, sunflower glitter for your for your next party event. You could use it for decorating cards, for whatever it is. Just write it really nice, and then write exactly what they're buying. Like break down your listing description um, next to SEO and next to picture. The listing description is like what's going to close out the sale, basically. Um, you want to make sure that the listing description describes precisely what you're selling, 
how to order, what they're getting, what's included, what size, what color, shipping policy, return policy, and then you could have that policy in there. You could say, hey, please make sure that you check your address. And you could also, when you when somebody um, places an order from your shop, you could send them a thank you message and you could put that in there. You could say, hey, thank you so much for your order. I appreciate your business. Please make sure that your address is correct within the next two hours or whatever it is. Um, that's a nicer way to say it. And you put, even if you message me, so you're telling them, even if you message me and, and, and the package was delivered somewhere else, that's not my responsibility. Well, it is because if somebody messaged you, I get it that you already send the package out. So it got, so you send it to the address they, that they put and they message you later, but you don't want to say that, you know, if they message you, you're almost saying like, don't message me later because regardless, it's your fault. You should remove that completely. You should always say, message me with any questions, any concerns. That's what you should be putting. Don't put, even if you message me, it doesn't matter at that point. You, you shouldn't do that because they're going to leave you a bad review. They're not going to buy from your shop again. It's really, really hard to retain a new customer. It's easier to keep the customers you currently have. So the ones that you have, you have to um, go above and beyond. And if you were, you know, selling like tons of sales, I could kind of see it being hard to keep up with orders and people messaging you. But because you, because right now you aren't selling that much, um, it should be easier for you to handle customers' requests and things like that. And I will even have like, if, if that was an issue that people are putting the wrong address, maybe have like an extra fee for if that happens that they have to pay for you to, you know, send it to the right address again, if it does come back to you again, the product. So make sure that you take the time to create a listing description that pretty much uh, describes in detail the product that you're selling. This is the first impressions that the customer gets. So this is how you win a customer and encourage the customer to press on the buy button. But um, if you have this message here and that's the only thing you have here, and then you put ship in baggy and that's all you have, um, even if you have the best picture, even if you have the best quality of things, people are going to be turned off and they're not going to want to buy. So I would switch this around, take the time um, to to fix it and to rewrite it and make sure you include this in a nicer way in your shipping policy. Cause I don't think there's nothing wrong by telling that it's just the way that you did it in the first, I mean, you didn't write nothing else, but just that. So that's the only thing I had um, an issue with looking at it as a potential buyer. Basically um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the curating of your shop, right? So is it does your shop look cohesive? Does everything flow together? Um, so I think that you did a good job. I think you did the XC plus. So you have the rotating banner. And that's great because I think that the additional features that they currently have now does help make your store stand out more if you do it the right way. I would do the banners again. I think that um, it could look better. It could be more appealing. And I didn't really necessarily care for the cup to be sideways. I was a little confused on how the picture looks. Um, it could look a little bit nicer. Um, like this is a beautiful cup, but it, the picture is not doing any justice on it. Um, I would even have like, like a banner with all the cups that you sell. That would be really cool to kind of showcase all the different cups and maybe have another banner with all the glitter that you sell and maybe have another one with something additional different that you sell in your shop. Um, and this way you could showcase the different products right now. Um, I necessarily think that you need to change this. Um, also, if you, if you look at the most prominent shops, right out there, the ones that make more money than I do, that the ones that are like, you know, breaking the bank. If you look at their shops, they have amazing cover photos. So they have pictures that, you know, they have their social media link in there. 
they have their website address, they have the hours of operation, they have like great customer service, they have a, a shop announcement saying, he, the, he, these are my hours, you want 10%, use this coupon, contact me here, blah, 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 blah. You have to think about it that way. And I would definitely work on changing your timeline. I will work on the pictures. Some of these pictures, um, like this right here, if I was to look at this cup, um, I, it, I don't know what I'm looking at, to be honest. It looks like it's a cup. It looks like it could be a pen, I think. Not 100% sure. The picture's not attractive, so I'm not going to want to click on it. You see how these have, like, lines? I don't know if that's supposed to be in the picture. I think that's a... Oh, actually, this is a light. This is a, a, a shadow, I think. I could be wrong, right? But I believe this is a shadow from your camera. Like a light reflection. So things like that, because to me, it looks like a white line. But I think... It's not supposed to be there, right? Or is it supposed to be there? Or is this? Or are you telling me that I could put my name in here? That's what you're saying. You see, I was confused just even looking at it. So imagine like the random person. And then when somebody's looking at your picture, this is what they're looking at. They're, when they click on it, they see the full picture, you see? But when they're when they send the search results, they see this. So the, it's cut off. I don't even, it says aim here. It doesn't say name here, you see? So someone's not going to know what this is unless they read this, but majority of people don't read. What they do is look at the picture and then click and then read. So if they don't, if they don't understand what they're getting, they're not going to click on it. So you definitely have to change the timeline covers and um, change all the pictures in my suggestion. Make sure that they're clear. Make sure you have a cohesive background. Some of these have like a dark shadow. Some of them are really, really light. Some of them have like the little white lines here. I don't think that's supposed to be there on the cup. Like that right there is not supposed to be there. That's like the, I guess the reflection of the camera. Um, I, I would redo everything and work on it and make sure that it's cohesive, that everything flows together. Everything has the same background. Um, that is that, you know, it looks nice. It goes together and it helps with the eye visually appealing as much as you can. Another thing is that is people want to know who you are as a seller, why they should buy from your shop. And I didn't see that you have an about me section. And the about me section is how people, you know, some people are emotional. I'm an emotional buyer. And a lot of times people buy just because, and a lot of times they buy because they make a connection with someone. They're like, well, he's a single father or he's, he started this hobby just like I did. And they might buy from you, but it's important um, if you look at the major companies, all companies have a compelling story. They have a bio of who they are. You have to treat this as a huge company too. It doesn't matter whether you got 20 sales or 20,000 sales. You should always have a compelling story of who you are, a storytelling, and you want to showcase that also to potential customers. So I will work on creating a about me section, um, you do have different pricing in your store, and that's really good. I always tell people that you should have like a diverse selection of products with different points so you could kind of see what works for you, what doesn't work. So you've done a really good job with that. You need to um, pay attention to small details. That's one of my, my biggest struggles as well. But you need to pay attention to small detail. It's crucial that you take your time and you stand out a you stand out apart from all competitors. You are in a niche that everybody else is doing. You are in a competitive niche. And right now, you're not standing out from nobody else. So what's happening is you're getting drowned. You have to make sure that your business stands out, that why should I buy from you when there's like 20 other stores with similar or same products? So you want to make sure that you stand up, up stand out apart that you have a nice cover photo, that you have a shop logo, that you have your owner's information, that you brand your business. And this is going to help you build credibility. It's going to increase your sales. Um, make sure that, you, you know, like I said earlier, take the time to fill out your about page, your story. You do have a logo. I do like the fact that you have that. I will add a tagline right here. You, you could do that on the edit shop. Add a tagline. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. You do have one here. So 
the tagline is actually really nice so i think that that's good i don't think you really need to change that so that's actually pretty good you do have good reviews so that does does show you know people are satisfied with your products um the issue is you know making sure that you know you you do these changes but people are happy with your products so you do have great products so that's not that's never been the issue with with anything that i'm looking at right now and you know take the time to um what i said earlier write your shipping make sure that you write a clear coherent shipping policy that um explains in detail um what the process is and this is going to increase the confidence of a potential buyer from from actually buying from you if you offer international shipping make sure that you mention that you could also put it up here if you do because more people will be prone to buying from you if you do offer international shipping and make sure that you write an outline with shipping insurance if you have any return and refund policies and make sure you include the address thing in there you just make sure that you sound more politely about it, um, not abrasive with it. That way customers feel like they could buy from you. And if something goes wrong, they could still get help from you. Um, you know, making sure that once you do all these changes, you will need to analyze your store every month or the, the lease will be every three months if you don't want to do it monthly, quarterly. However, you want to pay attention to keep key performing indicators. You want to make sure that you are using all the tools that Xe provides you. Xe provides you Xe stats that you could go in there and you could see who is your target audience, where they're coming from, what keywords are working, what keywords are not working. You need to check your metric, metric, metric. You have to check that every day. You have to see what's selling, what's converting, because at the end of the day, you cannot grow your Xe shop if you're not examining your Xe metrics. If you don't have a clear understanding of what sells and what doesn't sell in your shop, then you're not going to increase, you're not going to be able to increase your sales no matter, no matter what you do. Because at the end of the day, you have, everything works together. And if, if you're creating products and no one's buying also, you have to be realistic with yourself and say, this product I had for a year and no one has bought it, even after changing the SEO even after putting a really nice picture, it could be that a product no one wants to buy it. So you have to be very honest with yourself. And the products that you find yourself that are the top sellers or the top contenders, they're the ones that people are clicking on, then what you want to do is focus your energy on those. Don't focus your energy on stuff that's not working. Focus on the energy on the ones that are working. And then you make matching items for those things. So if you have a cup, a pink cup, I don't know, pink and gold cup that's working, create other stuff around that cup. Create a robust line around that cup. It could be glitter that goes with it. It could be other things that you are creative that you could do and that goes around that line because therefore um, you have more potential of selling. And then you could always, if the customer buys it from you, you could always send them a link. Hey, these are some matching items that go with what you purchase and hopefully that will also help you increase um, your revenue as well. So these are my tips for your shop. I was going to look at your um, the two links that you provided. So thank you for providing the other two links. Um, also, another thing is when you have social media, um, whatever logo you use on your Etsy should be in your social media. It should, go, it should be all across the same. So you have in your Etsy shop, a logo that has your name and it's like kind of it has like watercolors and different colors but on instagram you have um sparklers.com i guess that's your website and it's black and um I, it's confusing for some people because they'll be like okay am i at the same shop or did i click somewhere else so i would definitely work on having a cohesive look across all social media, having the same profile, the same logo and same cover. Um, if you have like Facebook or Twitter, having the same um, cover that you use in your store as well with your logo. So you shouldn't have a mix or different stuff because it does create a little bit of confusion. Also, you, you have here website click down 
when I clicked on it, it took me to a Facebook page. Um, that's confusing also because if I thought I was clicking and I was going to go to a website, it's not taking me to a website. It's taking me to your Facebook page. You have a car as your Facebook cover. And then on the bottom, you have the mugs. And then when I click on the mug, there's no link for me to buy. They say I want to buy this mug right now. I can't buy it. See, there's no link. And some people are too lazy to, to like, search because I'm like that. Like, you know, out here you have, like, a, a address or something, like a web address. I'm too lazy to type that in in the search engine. A lot, and then because it's a little bit different, the spelling, I probably misspell it or something. So my suggestion is if you're going to put your website, make sure it was website. I personally would say um, optimize your Instagram account. Make sure that you create a pro um, a bio. Make sure that you write what you sell and put keywords in there to optimize your Instagram. Make sure that whatever link you have here goes to your Etsy shop so you could get sales. Um, make sure that every time you post, just don't use hashtags. See, you just put in hashtags only. And it's good that you're using hashtags, but you're not taking the time and energy to create a successful shop. You just, you put a picture, hashtags, and call it a day. And that's not social. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, I post it for the day and that's it. Social, that's why it's called social media. Social means being social, means liking other people's posts. Anybody that follows you, taking the time to thank them and follow them back or liking their posts, interacting with people, writing a compelling message of why they should buy from your shop, writing a call to action, you know, writing like get this beautiful Tumblr cup, click bio link to learn more about it, or click bio link to browse through the store, or click bio link to, um, I don't know, to get this beautiful cup for a gift, whatever it is. You know, um, play with events. If there's it's Father's Day or if it's Mother's Day, put a post about Mother's Day. Use trend, trends at the moment for if it's Christmas, if it's, you know, Valentine's. Use trends that are currently at that moment so you could drive more sales to your shop. But you definitely do need to work on putting the time and energy, not only on your Etsy, but also on your social media. Um, taking pictures that... Um, are cohesive taking pictures that look good like this picture here I'm not really sure what I'm buying if I was to buy something this one is beautiful it looks good it has some little background issue with being dark but at least I know what I'm buying I think this is the best one here um this is actually really I would buy this cup um but the pictures are sideways which is not a bad thing it's just that it could look better it could look way better um this picture here again is cut off um yeah, so you would definitely need to work on it. Um, just don't put hashtags only. Uh, I know for myself that like it, you need to put the caption. Also, another thing is that um, don't just post for buying only. Make sure that you tell your story, who you are. It's, it's okay to put a picture of yourself once in a while, um, of your brand, and, and showcase another side of you. Like this is my... Instagram account and I just had an anniversary with my husband and I put my picture of us um, we had a, a baby a couple months ago I put pictures of him and this shows people that I'm a mom I'm a wife you know I work full-time I have a business and these are things that you do to connect with other people and it's, it's just a great way to increase not only your followers but your sales your revenue your community and your brand, and that's what you want to work on. Um, the same thing with, with Facebook, just make sure that you go in there and you have a Facebook page dedicated for your business. You could have your separate one for for your personal stuff. I have my personal one as well, um, but you do need one for your business as well. I hope that um, I wasn't too harsh on this, on this um, video. I really tried to give um, feedback without being mean or without being so critical to the sense that I'm not motivating the person. I really want to motivate you to the point that uh, you have a successful store. I wish I was as creative as you are. Um, you're making mugs and you have beautiful glitter, things that 
I could only imagine if I could do, right? So I wish I had your um, skill to do these beautiful tumblers that I know I can do. So I do want to um, say one more time, Hernan, that you do have beautiful products. The issue is how you're showcasing them. The issue is the SEO. The issue is the photography, right? How you're showcasing them. The issue is the listing description. It's not fully done. It, it's just a store that you put a whole bunch of pictures. You did it really quick. You threw it in there and you're waiting for a sale. And you got in a couple sales. And if your products weren't great, you will get a whole bunch of bad reviews. So you don't have bad reviews. So that's a good thing. It's just that you just need to tweak it. And once you tweak it, the sales will come in and you'll see a big difference. And it comes with time as well. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, it's not something that you develop overnight. I know for me, when I started my shop, I thought it looked great. And then the more I looked at it and the more I spent time on it months later, I would go back and tweak it and be like, oh my God, it looks horrible. Let me fix it. And then I would tweak it and I would tweak it. And then like a year, you know, a year passes or two year passes. And I go back to, cause I did screenshots of my pic of my store and I will go back and be like, oh my God, I thought it looked so nice and it really didn't. So we, you have to look at it in a critical way without being discouraged and, and, and just taking what people tell you um, and making the changes that you feel are necessary for you. Um, but definitely um, work on those things. And I think that you have a good, t good potential way of making um, more money as well. I don't necessarily think, um, lastly, that you need to have 100 items in a shop to sell but I do think you need a little bit more you only have 26 items um I did see a store that has 86 items and she sold over 20,000 sales so that's why I say you don't need to have like one of my shops has like 3,000 items you don't need that many if you have quality items you have a beautiful shop you've done everything else correctly the sales will come in regardless so um but I would add a little bit more that's the only thing I forgot to mention I would add a couple more listings try to make it around 80 or 100 if you can um, working on that little by little um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial if you guys if it's your first time watching make sure you subscribe to my channel for additional Etsy tutorial videos and make sure to give this video a thumbs up thank you guys have a wonderful night